I am a member of 12-step recovery. In fact, last uh, Friday, April 19th, uh, I celebrated my 46th year uh, in continuous recovery. I've been practicing centering prayer since about 2004. And how that came about was uh, through one of the sponsees that uh, I sponsored at the time. And at that time, I was going through some very, very uh, rough patch uh, in my recovery. Uh, what had happened was is that uh, uh, at that time, I had two boys. They were both uh, coming of age. One was uh, had already passed his 18th birthday, and the other one was at his 18th birthday. And my wife of 25 years, uh, out of the blue, uh, told me that she wanted a divorce. It was a complete surprise to me, and, and it really devastated me. And as a result of that, I got involved in therapy, and the therapist used uh, meditation as one of his modalities. And that kind of opened me uh, to that at a deeper level. It had always been a part of 12-step recovery. Uh, and then from there, one of my sponsees introduced me to uh, centering prayer by giving me a, a copy of the book, Open Mind, Open Heart. And uh, I read that and just really fell in love with the practice and became a regular practitioner of centering prayer. Uh, what happened was, is that in 2004, uh, my uh, youngest son, who was 18 at the time, uh, decided to uh, join the Marine Corps. And, uh, I, and I supported that decision. I think it was good. Uh, but there was a lot of conflict going on at the time, and it was very, very dangerous. And also, in parallel at that time, uh, my wife uh, at that time had proceeded to push this divorce, which I resisted. Um, I was wanting to reconcile the marriage. What I didn't know about at the time is that she was having an affair with someone else. And... Uh, uh, you know, when I did find out about that, the betrayal and everything was deeply, deeply upsetting. So it was a very tough and traumatic period of my life. And, and the centering prayer was one of the things that kind of gave me a grounding in my spirituality. Um, so let me uh, advance forward uh, four years. Uh, the divorce had happened. It took a year. Uh, I didn't find out until after the divorce that my wife had been having this affair. And this figures into the welcoming prayer practice for me because uh, I grew up in a uh, dysfunctional alcoholic family. And there I became very skillful with the art of denial because the last thing you wanted to do, you know, was to call attention to the elephant in the living room, as they say, and create problems. Uh, in that type of family situation. Uh, so denial was a very, very strong uh, character defect, as you would say, uh, with me. And uh, so it took a year uh, for me to finally uh, acquiesce and uh, grant the divorce. And by that time, my youngest son had gone through basic training and was had been deployed uh, in Afghanistan. He was Marine infantry, uh, expert sharpshooter, and I knew he was in very, very dangerous places, and the communication was very sparse because they had him in these forward operating bases. Uh, he was on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, so very little communication with him. And uh, my oldest son had already left the house, so I was there alone in this big house, and I remember coming home from work, and I would often think, you know, when am I going to drive into the driveway? And there would be the Marine Honor Guard to tell me, you know, that my son had become a, a war casualty. So I always kind of lived with that uh, apprehension. Um, uh, moving ahead to uh, 2008, my son did survive all that and uh, had been uh, had come back home uh, and had spent the summer decompressing while he was still uh, in the Marine Corps. Uh, but had found an apartment, was trying to establish his life, which would be after the Marine Corps. And uh, that brings us to September 1st of 2008, which was Labor Day. 
And uh, I had gone to a spiritual retreat that weekend. And uh, that day I had talked with my son over the phone. Everything seemed to be well with him. He had been receiving therapy that most of these uh, vets receive, uh, you know, if they've been through combat. And I was doing well with that. And uh, that evening uh, I, I got a phone call. And the phone calls asked me to identify myself and asked me if I had a son, Michael Murray. And I said, yes, I do. And they said he has been involved in an accident, a, a, a motorcycle accident, and he did not survive. And, you know, I can't really describe in words the impact that that kind of uh, event has. I had experienced similar with my dad when I was 10 and a half. He was alcoholic and on a, on a business trip, uh, he had uh, passed out and uh, choked to death and died. And it was very sudden and very traumatic. So that's the kind of impact that it had. It just, you go into shock. And, uh, you know, I had people come over and really comfort me and it was, uh, but it was very, very tough. And that night I went out to take a walk. And during that walk, I had uh, this conversation with God. And what I realized is, is that first of all, I wasn't going to blame God for this. I don't believe in a vengeful punishing type of God. Uh, I don't understand God. Uh, but I didn't believe and still don't believe that these things are intentional. I just have come to understand that the nature of life is like this. And uh, sometimes we have tragedies in our lives and sometimes we have great joy. Uh, the other thing I realized is uh, that it, I was in very intense pain about this. Uh, that I didn't want to make the rest of my life about losing my son. I wanted to be able to grow through this and, and continue to live my life uh, and, and have a, the productive life that I had been having up to that point. And so I realized in, in this conversation with God, I said, God, you know, I don't know what's in store. I don't really know how to get through this. But what I will do is I will make the commitment uh, to walk with you through this. And so the elements of the welcoming prayer, the first two movements of the welcoming prayer, which by the way, I, you know, I had only been into centering prayer for about four years and I uh, didn't know a lot about welcoming prayer. I had been not formally introduced to it. I think I had heard about it. But uh, and later was to learn much more about it. But the first two movements of the prayer is the first one. We sink into whatever is going on and we become open to the circumstance instead of trying to wallpaper over it or live in denial, uh, which was a very strong characteristic within me. Um, I was able to just sit with and be with the pain and kind of open to to what was happening, even though I didn't like it. And then the second movement of the prayer is welcome, welcome, welcome. And I think that that happened at the point at which I invited God into the situation and made the commitment that, hey, even though this is painful and I don't know how to deal with it, I will commit to walk with God through this and we'll just let whatever unfolds unfold. Uh so in a way, I, I had an organic introduction to the welcoming prayer in those two movements. What happened uh, was is that that following week, uh, great healing started to happen. Uh, you know, there was still a rift between my ex-wife and myself. I had remarried by that time. Uh, my new wife, my new bride was only, uh, we had been married for eight months. And this was a huge shock to her, what had happened to me. And uh, what happened was that next morning, uh, my wife, uh, my ex-wife, her husband, and my oldest son were all sitting in his home, uh, which I had never been to before. In fact, I'd only met him once before. 
uh, bawling our eyes out, you know, just in deep grief over what had happened. And that next week was just a miraculous week of, of healing and walking through this whole uh, event and trauma in all of our lives. And uh, I won't go into great detail about that, but what I walked away with, uh, one of the fruits, I think, of the welcoming prayer experience that I had was is that, you know, no matter how screwed up of a situation uh, that can happen to us, uh, if we open to God and we open and walk with God through this, welcome him into the situation, uh, it can take the most screwed up situation and use it to the good and bring healing. And that's what I experienced there. And that's what, you know, my my ex-wife and, and my current wife and her, my ex-wife's husband, and to some extent, my oldest son, all experienced that. And it really changed the relationship that we all had with each other. Um so that was a, a, a very, very powerful uh, experience for me and showed me, you know, that, that what the welcoming prayer really does is, uh, and, if, and I have to have that core connection and communication through centering prayer established. But when I add the welcoming prayer on top of that, uh, what it what it does is is that it allows me to walk through these difficult things, and what I have found is is that when we do that, that's when the graces of God uh, become apparent in our lives. Uh, you know, when we're going through the good times in life, I don't think we're much. You know, at least I'm not someone who, uh, you know, is uh, constantly in, in gratitude. OK, it's something that I probably need to work on more. But when the bad times hit, OK, if I can use that welcoming prayer practice to walk through uh, a situation that along with that pain comes the growth in the sense that God's graces are made present. And it really, really deepens uh, every aspect uh, about my spiritual relationship to God and to other people. Uh, and so I'm very, very thankful for uh, having um, not just welcoming prayer, but the whole uh, cadre of practices that contemplative outreach have availed to me and uh, really helped me to uh, have a richer life. You know, it's not that I've had a happy life, but I have had a rich life. It's been full of tragedy and it's been full of joy. And this brings us to the third movement of the welcoming prayer. What it has allowed me to do is to embrace life, okay, and live it fully and to, you know, uh, not get hung up in my need for security, affection, and control and instead uh, open to and embrace life as it is. So thank you for giving me the time to share this, and I hope that uh, we will meet uh, somewhere in our path in the future. Thank you.